We pledge to say it like it really is. With dignity and respect. Committed to free speech and common sense. Upbeat and entertaining. Straight talking and direct. We may educate each other and you. Heartfelt and passionate. Thought-provoking. Provocative and controversial. Fearless and truthful. Welcome to The Pledge, the only debate show with no presenter, no censorship and no rules. As you can see, we've managed to get the Pledge band back together. But, like albums, second series are always notoriously difficult. <laughs> so you can expect plenty of tantrums, egos and walkouts. And you should see Rachel's rider for the green room. <laughs> On the set list today, Graham says it's France 1, England 0. Emma wants to talk about sex. Rachel tells us it's time to cough up. And June's talking racism and the working class. But, confession time. I used to be a Sunday tabloid journalist. And with just a few exceptions, I loved it. The chase for the story, the sniff of the scoop, <laughs> fighting off the competition and exposing wrongdoers, hypocrites, crooks and cheats. A tough life, undoubtedly, but worth it unquestionably. That's why I applaud the Sunday Mirror, bizarrely, the first Fleet Street title for which I worked, for breaking the story concerning Jim, the washing machine salesman, <laughs> otherwise known as Labour statesman Keith Vaz, and the allegations of rent boys and their possible purchase of Class A drugs. Now, some dreary no-marks are complaining about harassment and intrusion. Utter cobblers. Exposing someone in such a key law-making position not only interests the public, it is definitely in the public interest. So, let's get this party started. That's just plain mean. <laughs> <laughs> mean? No, it's not mean. It, it is in the public interest because he was in a position of influence. Am I allowed to disagree with one you... of the thousand most important people in London? <laughs> you too. Referring yeah. to a poll in the standard. Well, yes, yes. No, uh, in all seriousness, I know Keith. I've been okay. a very long time um, and have a lot of friends who are close to him. Okay. Um, and I think, you know, when we wonder why so many people who could be brilliant public servants don't go into politics, it's stories like this as to why they don't. At the end of the day, Keith hasn't been a hypocrite. He is not one of these politicians that is out there saying he is against gay marriage or against prostitution. So, to me, I don't see why he should have resigned. June, June, do you think... I mean, I, when I ha am faced with any kind of dilemma, I ask myself this mm. question. Could my actions result in an unfortunate headline in the Daily Mail? If you were Keith Faz, Chairman of the Home Affairs Committee, the and you were pretending to be Jim, a washing machine salesman, yeah. and you had two rent boys, a third arriving, mm -hmm. some of them possibly with Class A drugs, mm -hmm. and your committee was the committee tasked with investigating Class A drugs and prostitution, yeah. do you think you might say to yourself, Hmm, I don't think this one is going to play so well in the tabloids. But don't you and to be fair, no. most washing machines come with a filter. <laughs> he clearly doesn't. He has a spin cycle, though, <laughs> doesn't he? But don't you think, Rachel and Nick, um, it's much more nuanced than that. Clearly, this is something that It's he not nuanced has... at all. No, it is. It's the most classic can, tabloid sting you can imaginable. imagine when Keith is from a generation where it's not easy to come out. He's from a community where it's not easy yeah. to come out. We have and I do for think his wife and, and his family I in totally, this terrible my situation. heart breaks for his wife and his family. Wouldn't his wife is a wonderful woman. It's still a story. You cannot be in, you you cannot be in charge of a committee in that's looking at Aspen. In 2016, it's not our place you to out people. Grandstand. Uh, you can't grandstand over witnesses and pick holes in their defences. So we so shouldn't be ruining lives. Expect, as he well, himself said, those who stand in on a, whatever it is, yeah. in a how people took out should themselves be, be held That's got them a strangely you know what, quiet what, so I al what I always do when, when I look at a story like this is I remember my first reaction, right? And regular people's reactions, not looking at it from the mm. media point yeah. of view. Most people don't hire rent boys, assume a false identity and take poppers. They don't. They just don't. And most people aren't politicians. You don't have to be a politician, but for a short period of your life, if you choose to do that, you are there to serve. You are, you are a mm. member of Her <laughs> Majesty's you know, MPs here, you are a position of and to respect, authority, and to, can I, can I just finish? Yeah. And, to and to represent people, yeah. okay? 
just even put aside what his position was on that committee, it is all about judgment, mm -hmm. that position. Mm -hmm. And when you elect people, mm -hmm. you know, certainly like you hopefully look up to your boss and mm -hmm. people who are looking after you at work, these are people looking after the country mm -hmm. and those laws that mm -hmm. are there. And I'm not saying he broke any laws, mm -hmm. that's not what's being said. Yeah. But it is a question of judgment. Because what, what, what was said to me was a couple of my friends said, God, we don't do anything like that. And we're not even <laughs> MPs. I mean, just remember, regular people, we always talk about regular people, but regular people's reactions to seeing quite an extraordinary evening in the life of an MP. I, I think you'd be surprised what regular people get up to. But they to. don't I go and are, hi, they don't no, put themselves do... forward to serve or represent no, people or be a good judge no, on laws. But Emma, don't you think we still live in a society where people cannot be who they really are? I'm and not, I think uh, that's the bigger question here. You, and it is but, not but, our place to be outing people and ruining families. I the, just think this the is, point is, wrong. is he, he says it himself though, doesn't he? He, he, he said that those who are, hold others to account must yeah. themselves be accountable. Mm -hmm. So he's accepting that the position it, that he's in takes on a, a duty yeah. of responsibility, yeah. which is above and beyond people, as you've said, are reg that are regular people. Now, it's not a case, I don't think, in this instance, that, uh, that you're outing him or you're shaming him for the point just to do that. I think it's because there's, a, there's an obvious conflict because between, he between what, he's, mm -hmm. what I, his public role that. is just, and what his private life is. Just, and people just don't tr won't trust him because... He's, he's, you know, he's, he's led yeah, people... Yeah, but he's lost all authority and he was in a position of huge authority yeah. in now, national life. That That's I get. Now, where I, I do get. have... I, uh, I just feel terrible for him. Where I do have a problem with, with, with the tabloid um, sort of journalist approach, um, and Nick, you know, with his, with his history, who knows this better than me, is, is, the, is the fine line between what's in the public interest and what isn't and how newspapers and decide. certain outlets go, Why well, newspapers how they go decide? how they go about how they go about exposing people well graham you understand you experienced a terrible time with the press yeah i mean that was 1995 um, and there'd been rumors spread about me initially in the dressing room and then onto the terraces and the daily star very of nicely being homosexual yeah the yeah. daily star very kindly just before quite a big game put that on the front page of their paper. And, and the fact was, obviously it's pre-Leveson, mm. but the fact is, it was a rumour, there was nothing to substantiate it because mm -hmm. it was completely untrue. But the way they framed that headline was with a question and I couldn't yeah. do anything about it because it didn't say, they weren't saying that I was, I was gay. Um, but the damage that it did to me, the family, and then ongoing professionally to me... For was years. potentially huge, yeah. It was something that, that, um, that I had to deal with throughout my career. It used to be an old trick in the tabloids, and, and yeah. you'll remember this. Uh, friends are increasingly worried about. That means you've got yeah. nothing to base, nothing about. Yeah. Or, Graham Lasso, I want to silence these wagging tongues. I'm not mm. really gay. That would be the way that they would get into that story. Yeah. All that's gone. Yeah. All that is just ruled offside now, yeah. just not allowed. And that's the, that's the vital part of, of wherever we are, however developed we are, we've still got to have the checks and balances to challenge yeah. and check that, that these stories are arrived at in the right way. Now, listen, the, the, yeah. it's, it's in the public interest is if you're exposing, exposing misleading claims, uh, if people are lying, if people are cheating, uh, if well, there's hypocrisy... If was there's... he lying? Uh, he, was, he was hypocritical. And remember, he also gave a speech in Commons, also, which everyone was short with. Name. Hold on a second. He gave a speech in the <laughs> House of job. Commons where he talked about poppers, and he said, I have no knowledge of this, and people are all chortling around it. Now, we don't have the chronology, hmm. but certainly we now know that perhaps he was better informed. So he almost misrepresented within the House. So it comes back to this position. He's in, or this, this aspect. He's in a position of authority, and he's got it. I'm sorry he's a personal friend, but he had to go. Have you spoken to, to him, June? But, have you no, been in I've touch? I've sent a message, but I haven't spoken mm. to him. Has he spoke, said anything back? No, no. OK, because what I would say also is the tabloids in the post-Leveson era, there mm. is a new code yep. governing newspapers. You aren't going to see many of these stories Thank anymore God. like you used to. And Why? No, no, sorry, just Nick, to this point, on this particular story, the, the, the checks are there. No one is saying it's entrapment on this scenario because... That what this, this was happening anyway, yeah. and it was captured. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to reassure people of who have felt bad about the tabloid press in the past is actually there are more controls mm. now to strip it, to, to tag it straight to public interest. And, to be and fair, I don't it's think the mirror. you can say this isn't that. He's only referred the story to his solicitors. He has not put a formal complaint yeah. through no. to Ipso or yeah. the mm. press complaints, which has, yeah. Ipso has re re you know, replaced. And the point is... So I think he knows that this was a fair... Yeah, this was a fair, fair, fair and, story. And, and, and the and point is, for me, story. that it might well be a, a, yeah. a, a legitimate story, and, and, and the operation has been carried out in the correct way, mm. you know, post Leveson. Um, but at the same time, I think whilst there were still questions, 
about how what, what the details are. Yeah. I still think it's important that we m monitor that and make sure that, that the right procedures were followed. Right. Should MPs behave better than the rest of us? Well, I yes. just think because they should. They're yes. elected. Yeah, I do they think should. they should. Yeah, they should. Well, it's yeah, a short absolutely. period of yeah. time. Absolutely. That's all. Yeah. Not necessarily. Some of them have been there for decades. Yeah. No, but Eve's been there for 30 years. But a lot of people yeah. go into it later as well when they've mm. had some life experience. Mm. And I don't think it's too much to ask that while you're on the public payroll, looking after people's interests and putting their cases forward, yeah. that you hold yourself to the very highest Standard. But don't you have compassion for somebody who maybe cannot be who they really are? That's okay, listen, guys, That's from muddy. one national treasure, Keith Faz, to another, <laughs> the NHS. Phew. Next week's junior doctor strike is off for now. But I predict that at some point this dispute will be used by the government as the wedge issue to force some public debate over the future funding of the NHS. And even if it's not and all ends well, it should be. The share of GDP spent on healthcare is falling, while demand is rising and the population is ageing. So let's not argue over Saturday pay. Let's face facts. The NHS cannot continue to meet increasing demand, deliver current standards of care and stay within budget unless something changes. And that's a service free to all at the point of delivery. If politicians and voters aren't willing to fully fund a social and healthcare system, well then, we need to think about charges. Come on, everybody. We already pay for prescriptions and some social care is means tested. If we want to save the service that's already running a deficit of two billion, we're going to have to pay through the ear, nose <laughs> and throat. Um, well, you're wrong and you're right, interesting on this. Not everyone pays for prescriptions, you know. I know, obviously, those who, yeah, so, those so who can just, do, the old and the young don't. I tell you what appalls me, and I don't know if it's the same with, with, you, with you guys, but on the, unfortunately, I don't have to go very often, but when I go to the doctor, there's a chart that says 117 missed appointments this yeah. month or something like that, and, I, and, and you have yeah. to fight to get an appointment. Yeah, yeah. I honestly would institute something that, unless you're a pension or you have, you know, mental health issues or something, you're probably going to be fined 10 quid. Sure. Right? Mm, Simple absolutely. as that, and if you don't pay the 10 quid, you don't get an appointment. That's I'm happy great. with things like that. I'm also happy with something like, you know, fortunately I've got a few quid, so let's say I want to see the doctor this afternoon. I or should be able weekend. to yeah, I should be able to pay fifty pounds and there should Take be that's an, what an, I'm saying. But we have to be very careful because we are in a bit of an elite here. And there are people out there for whom the idea of actually paying ten quid if they miss an appointment or whatever is really gonna make a difference on them. So and, and you mentioned politicians. You know, as better than any of us, no politician would ever get elected who said you're going to have to pay for the NHS. You just wouldn't get elected. Your party, if you were the party leader, would be decimated. You would never get, get elected. That hasn't so, been put to the test quite, has it? Because no politician honestly? ever has said we need to make, we need to think about co-funding the NHS. Yes. And they might actually be able to make, make the case, as but, I want to do here. But people will say, look, I pay my NI, I pay my national insurance, I should be able to go to the doctor, I should be. So you are right, and it is brilliant that we're all living longer, and it's brilliant that the men and women working on the medical profession are making so many uh, advances and it's fantastic that the mm. drugs are there so we are going to have to address it but it needs very very careful thought very careful thought I know, you wouldn't want otherwise sorry I will prove sure. the people who need the NHS most mm. are the ones who aren't going to get the treatment and let's assume then the well NHS is like the welfare system mm. it is a safety net for those who, who really can't afford it mm. but I think I mean let's go back a bit to the founding principles of the NHS yeah. in 1948, when it cost a tenth in real terms yeah. of what it does now, and national insurance contributions actually could fund it. But now, there is no relationship between our NI contributions and the cost of the NHS, which is 120 mm. billion. It's dysfunctional, isn't it? It's mm. not, it doesn't work for a lot of people. Now, when it works, it is brilliant. Mm. Best healthcare in, the, in world, the world, without a doubt. Yeah. I'm not saying Hallelujah. that. But the broken mm. bits are so broken, and I think this is where we need to address issues. It takes all of us. So to Nick's point yeah. about people not turning up for appointments, there's this, they have to take responsibility sure. that if they're blocking the system for other people that Drugs need it, at &E. then you, we've got yeah. to look at ways of fixing. Yeah. Of, Drunks at A&E. Uh, consultants mm. say the A&E departments are 
clogged by people who've got into fights, who are drunk, who turn up, and then completely but what would you do paralyzed. Do with you charge do them. You, if He's they, drunk. If, no, He's they drunk. do. You can eat. You How can. can you this is what consultants them? I've spoken to say is needed. There needs to be a disincentive for this people turning up. This is like Tony Blair up. marching people to the cash point, you know, when they're drunk or well, something like maybe. that. Well, maybe. It's not going to work, is it? How, yeah. I'm drunk in, in an A&E in, in Kent. You were drunk yeah, last yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to get the money off me? I've split my head open or whatever. But it is a disincentive, a fiver. But, Graham, sorry, finish your point. No, but but equally with that, if you do have some insurance, if you if you have a base level of insurance mm. that if means tested obviously you can't just make people people pay insurance but if, mm. if you've got some way of insuring yourself against that situation yeah. mm. then there's a chain that you can follow in order to get some money back if you've if you've abused it now not saying that's the right answer but ultimately what's happening is the people that need it most often are the ones that come up against the blockages and the and the breakages in the system mm. and that I think is is the bit we need to modernize so the principles are all very well and good and I absolutely uphold them but we still have to be modern about the way we look at it and say which bits aren't working there's so much waste, so much within, waste. within the we NHS. We need to look it's at the bureaucracy and the waste. Because it's constantly plugging holes. Yeah. There's not a proper open communication loop of feedback. So people get away with bad practice for decades because they don't have a culture of, of checks and balances, balances to yeah. improve and make, make the system more efficient. Mm. So all of that has to be applied in a certain way. Because if you were starting the NHS today with those principles, it wouldn't look anything like <laughs> it does. No. Mm. So we've got to find a way of being, as you say, grown up about it and not it, it being not necessarily a political issue, it but a national... A it's got to be a national interest. But it's it, all, in all of our interests to do something about it. It is a political issue. People elected every single government I can remember on the basis that the NHS will stay free at the point, point of contact. Dinner. That yeah. is why the Tories are in power now. That is why they are there. It was one of David Cameron. He stood there and he talked about all the experience he's had with the oh, NHS. NHS. Yeah. And yeah. he said, this is what I'm going to look after. And I think people are quite rightly angry about anything that ever seems to come up like this, where you say, maybe we should be co-paying, maybe we should be funding it in a different way. Because people hold the NHS to their hearts. You know, if you just remember London 2012, when Danny Boyle put the Had NHS the whole, yeah. in that opening ceremony, it's, it's got a very special place yeah. for people. Well, people but, will have to pay a lot no, no. more in some sort but of health sorry, tax but, then. But, but That's people, fine. But don't Let's you think do it can be better managed? Well, I mean, bed well, blocking, there's they've so They've tried much efficiency waste. savings. There's been any number of, of you know, reports into efficiency. Yeah, but they haven't necessarily tried hard enough, And they, they haven't succeeded, have they? Well, I no, don't think by fining people for missing GPs uh, appointments is going to be the magic no. bullet. No, I agree, but we how far will you go? need to think much, much bigger how far, than that. How far, how far, how far would you a go? A health tax, some sort of Well, that's called national insurance. Well, no, I'm it's not a, a separate, hypothecated health tax to pay for the NHS. National insurance is a drop in the ocean compared to what we so need to put, spend so every year on the NHS. Up. Of course we've got... Listen, if people aren't going to pay for the NHS we've, uh, via, uh, via using of, use of services, then taxes Why are going to have to rise to pay them. that June suggested, which I think they it. will be... I mean, at one point there were more managers than there were mm. clinical yeah. staff. I don't know whether that's still the case, but Ridiculous. let's go down a route... That, let's look at the savings that can be yeah, made. Let's exactly. look where payments can be made. Right, I know Do you five think people but... haven't looked at savings Not to be properly, made? Rachel. I don't think they have. I don't think they have. If it was I, a private well, business, there's no way they would get away with that much. Listen, I have a... OK, I have a thought on this. I think we could get rid of a lot of the agency workers who cost an absolute arm yeah. and a leg. And you know, they cost a couple of hundred pounds a day to get. Yeah, but why are they why there? Can't, I don't know. Why can't we get up? You They're know, there because they're needed, people. aren't they? Could, they have to outsource we could, we agency. Could, I know. Well, we need to look at home care for the elderly so that they're not bed blocking because the cost of that is just frightening. So there's yeah. a lot we yeah. can do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the cost of that will be quite expensive. Yeah. Any but okay, yeah. around this table, mm -hmm. who of you agrees with me that we have to ab abandon the, one of the founding pillars of the NHS, well, which is free at the point of delivery for everything? I can't agree with that. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I can't I, believe you're being no, 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 heads said, in sands, guys. No, I'm the same. Yeah. I think that it has to be looked at. Now, I'm, I'm, I, but the caveat for me is that you have to protect the people that need it the most. I yeah. agree. And, and that has to be Finding there has to be principle. some some yeah. um, means testing in in that respect. I've solved it. What I've had my idea, idea of the series. Go it's on. unfortunate <laughs> it's in the first early. episode, but there we go. Right, fat people. Right, who come in and they've got heart attacks or something like that. Oh, they get the first on. treatment free. Then, if they start to lose, if they don't start to lose weight, they're going to have to start paying. 
smokers who come in, they get their first treatment free. Unless they can prove that they're starting to try and quit smoking, they start getting changed and the charges get racked up. So if you keep going back because you're fat and you keep having heart attacks, right? What by the end, are you on? no, it's fantastic. <laughs> by the end, we're going to be charging them hundreds Rachel, of hundreds please because don't you have to be this. seen to try and lose some weight. <laughs> fat tax, but, but, fat I mean, smoking, that's, sold. That's, that's, that's a very, uh, <laughs> it's a very crude <laughs> <laughs> point of view. Well, I call it that, but, <laughs> but the principle <laughs> is, is that yeah. we've all got a Personal stake. Responsibility. We've all got a stake in this because ultimately, if we live healthy lifestyles, yeah. we're going to be less of a burden. Now there are lots of reasons why people don't have healthy lifestyles. For another, we save that for another day. But ultimately, if we incentivise people to be healthy, yes. we could almost get to a point where you Not could give people... Not his way, you would. You could give, right. I could oh, give you a bonus, right. as a, take something off your council tax, and if you lose a couple of stones. And football players are charged treble. Yeah. That's Absolutely. my latest plan. We, agree with that. we already pay that in tax. Nick, right. Nick, right. Nick is quite right to flag up obesity, and we should on yes. this show too, because it is going to be the fat bug that sinks the N but NHS, NHS Titanic. Or, or they'll have to pay. Of course. You know, bariatric we surgery. We have to face reality. The other point is, the founding fathers of the NHS... The founding fathers this. of the NHS Fact would not have said free to all if they looked at what they have to do now. Yeah. Nor in Bevan and Beveridge, but they I, wouldn't have I'm offered sorry. it Can I free. just say to you, Rachel, having lived in America where there wasn't free health care, and, you know, I was earning a decent salary, and the major I was spending more on my health care than I was on my mortgage over there. It's frightening. <clears throat> so I just think the peace of mind so that you have... a very have, small house. <laughs> 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 Darling, <laughs> good deposit. Um, well, I think the peace of mind that you have in living in a country that has free health care is just priceless. So we've well, got to That's why I want to preserve it. Yes. Well, thank you, Rachel. Future of the NHS, now to future of UK borders. <laughs> Being a Guardian reader, I can't actually believe I'm about to say this, but Nicholas Sarkozy has a point. Yes, you heard me correctly. He's demanding that border controls for migrants are moved to England, and with it, the so-called jungle refugee camp in Calais. He says refugees that want to claim asylum in the UK should be allowed to cross the channel so that they can be processed on our soil. The reasons he's saying this now is pretty obvious. He's standing in next year's presidential election and needs the right-wing vote. But, post-Brexit, I don't think we've got a leg to stand on. This is how the president of the Calais region put it. The British people have chosen to take back their freedom. They must take back their borders. In other words, we can't have our cake and eat it too. What would you do, Graham, if that border was an airport? Right, I'm going to put this in your mind, mm. because we don't let anybody fly into the country who haven't got the paperwork. Right, you yeah. actually have that rule there. So I just want to know what you'd say to that, first of all, Well, as a point of logic. Yeah, because there's a point of logic that's completely the opposite in the sense that you don't fly to Spain and get checked by Spanish border pat patrols when you leave a UK airport. You get checked when you arrive in Spain. But we are helping man that border. We do have... Yeah, it's a juxtaposition, do, isn't it? But, OK, so there's two things here. I think bringing in Brexit <clears throat> is a false Absolutely. comparison. Absolutely. Because I think, first of all, Sarkozy is putting his position out there, as you say, mm. and he's using what he can to make his point. But I think bringing in Brexit, this, the agreement that we have, the bilateral agreement we have there, isn't to do with Brexit, it's between France and the UK. It was that signed is the by Sarkozy yeah. himself. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I think, so that I think, was whilst we were part of the European Union. But it had nothing exactly. to do with the yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's separate. But it's still the influence that come it's, on. It's, it's, a, it's separate. It's it, Open of course borders it's separate. in the EU has led to the jungle at Calais. Okay. Obviously. Through Schengen. Yes. But we have a situation, we do have mm. very clear rules in place that if you are a genuine asylum seeker, yeah. you take asylum at the first point where you want, because it's the clues in the name. Absolutely. You don't care where you're going. Of course. You need asylum. If you're an economic migrant, it's a completely mm. different scenario. Mm. And fre the, the French also are in the scenario of having people in their country, on their land, and they have to deal with them, just like we do. But if you've created a border in another country, we are never going to get the same um, stress that the French are under in terms of people coming Precisely. into their country from an asylum-seeking point of view, because they will not arrive on UK soil before yeah. they arrive on other European soil. But I don't so understand there's a your argument. Do you want us, as a country, to take back these people? Do you want, do you want us to let them all in and then we decide what to do? What no, do you, what as I'm a, saying as a is citizen, we process, what do you want? We process asylum seekers through, yeah. through that system. Exactly. So in the, in the refugee camp that is called the jungle, some of those people would be processed and allowed into the UK. Yeah. Okay? 
So what I'm saying is that if we're not part of a European Union solution to this, they have every right to, to say no, that they don't. No, they we're going to... Because in these people... No, right, I don't they, follow this argument they, at they've, all. they've arrived okay. in Europe, as Emma says, yeah. they've arrived in Europe through, through probably either Italy or Greece. If anything, they should be rounded up, put on buses and sent back to Italy and Greece. That is where the, the problem lies. But if they're lies. claiming as asylum, they have to have the right but, to go through the process yeah. of being checked but to see whether they qualify for asylum. The, and the, the minute and they land in Italy, they've made it. Nirvana, I'm there. Boom. They don't need to come to Calais. Right. You're but, meant to claim asylum, as Emma said, in the first country you arrived. Yeah, it is very clear. Yeah, but that's not the reality. That's Otherwise, not the you reality. wouldn't have the Because Otherwise we have would... economic migrants. But, but you so, you, so you're saying that everybody that arrives at that at that point is an economic migrant? Well, we, you, some will be. They have to be determined. I think a lot more economic yeah, migrants. Yeah, seven thousand people. Well, what Graham in, is saying in the refugee is, camp. What Graham is saying is currently, as it stands, the the French. You know, they've been very polite and helpful and allowed us to process our migrants there. Now what he's saying is, if we're no longer part of the European Union, yes, of course, that decision was not made in, in, as part of the EU, but obviously it was influenced by it. So if we're not, then obviously we want to be on our own, we want to control everything, that means we process our own migrants. Let's just take a look at a recent Simple Sky News poll to inform not, the debate. This it's, not, recent, it's just fairness. Second, it's let's, just just, fair. just, let's just see what people are thinking. Here we are, the Sky News poll here. 23% of people said they would be willing for more refugees to move to their local area. At 66 percent, 66 percent say they would not. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily that they're right. Sure no, but either. this has got nothing to do with this. This Sorry. is the French saying we don't want to house those people the, here anymore. But you have Fair to, re you have to realise, Graham, that uh, uh, the result of this would be that more people, almost certainly, more people will come and live here or seek well, to come. Well, and live they here. would certainly come here to be processed. Right. And, and I think that we and if, if you flipped it on its, if you flipped it, it was this week that we've announced we're building a two million pound, 13 foot high concrete wall in Calais. Yeah, exactly. So you seem to be slightly at odds with where most people are going. Why are we doing that? Why are we? Why yeah. are we? Why do we feel we need to buy build a, a, a thirteen foot wall in Calais? Yeah, because we We've, clearly think the two K agreement is going to dissolve, and that we're going to have to process economic and asylum seekers but it's in Calais. And just let me separate this out a little bit as well, because you've not only have you got the refugee camp, but you've also got the the, the border control mm -hmm. between Fra France and England. So the French have their border control. In Dover, yeah. and 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 obviously and it we works have a well for them. As well. It, do, it does work well for them at the, uh, as as it stands, or to an extent, it works well. Clearly, it doesn't work that well if they're thinking about building a wall. Yeah. But ultimately, the relationship will change. If the relationship is changing because of yeah. Brexit, which is why I think it is relevant. Of Brexit course, is relevant, yeah. and we're saying we voted to leave the EU because we want to take back our sovereignty, take back our borders, and deal with immigration in our, on our own that. terms. Part of that yeah. is is processing immigration requests and, pro and processing asylum seekers. Simple now, as. whether they come in by an aeroplane from, from, well, from a country and seeking asylum... Well, it's a good one, actually. Well, they it won't is a good one, but that's plane. still a different... I still think that's a different part of the subject because that proves, whether it's Schengen, where you've got the open border controls, how people are encouraged, almost, to travel all the way across Europe, what their motives are to come to the French coast mm. and then say, right, why do we want to get to England? But that's a different story because they think they're going to get a better life, get better yeah. looks after over here I mean, if they're we, economic We've got to depend on Amber Rudd, sort Putting this out with Bernard Cazeneuve, and I don't see this one lasting at all. I what, think. What do you mean? See what what do you mean? I don't I see understand. the agreement that we have a juxtaposed the border. Accord. The Le Touquet agreement lasting because there's so little in this for the French. People Precisely, are, exactly you know, it's not, what it's not Calais calling, it's London calling. There isn't an exodus of people from England to France. We don't, they don't really need the border in, in Dover. No, they don't. It, we, we desperately need the border in France. It's very it's interesting. And so in, they're right to say, you wanted control, take back control, have your border back. Have your border in, back. In the run-up to the referendum, I spoke to, to a French journalist and I said, oh, you know, how is potential of Brexit being reported over mm. there. I won't do a French accent. And he said, <laughs> he said, we are done with you. Yeah. You don't want to be part with, of the euro. You don't want to do what we do with borders. You don't want, you want everything, have your cake and eat it. Yeah. We are done. Please go. And if yeah. you like, the writing was on the wall a bit then, but anyway, in terms of the relationship. Take your border yeah. back. But there you, you agree, go. Schengen is a disaster. Well, Schengen is but not we've never been a part of. No, 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 but that is why these well, poor souls, once they get to Italy, the whole of Europe is It's had unintended consequences, yeah. which we can see now yeah. because of what's happened in the Middle East. Which I mean, we never signed up to. Let's. Yeah, yeah and, that, and that, that again there. is not something we did ever sign up to. But yeah. I, I think. We're at a situation where we're still all waiting to see when we hear Theresa May say Brexit means Brexit, mm -hmm. what Brexit actually will actually means. mean. Mm -hmm. um, she, you know, I think there's limited time for, for her to sort of keep saying that line. But I think in this instance, 
what we're going to see is world leaders try and use it to their advantage when they are campaigning and to rip up accords which make sense regardless of whether the UK is in the EU. Yeah, they only make, they only make they sense, don't make sense to, if, if you're the, the beneficiary, EU. as, as, yeah. as, as yeah. you rightly say. We're the beneficiary of, of, this, of this agreement at the moment. Of course you've got the convention, the UN convention, status of refugees. There's a, there's a European convention on human rights that we're signed up to. That's got to change as well. So I think everything is open for, no, for no. debate. And if I was, and if I was much French, to Nick's, what, what Nick thing. said about those statistics, if that many people don't want to have um, a processing um, uh, place in the in UK, Denver, yeah. you can imagine the French are probably saying the same thing. Mm. We don't want a processing um, place in our... They've on got our... more room. OK. <laughs> Attention, <laughs> please. Well, that's it, then. Right. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, you two are coming up with solutions at the end of everything. Now, class, <laughs> are you ready for your lesson? Be prepared to cringe. Oh, oh, not again. Making no. love is one of the many ways that a man and woman have of showing that they love each other. And a banana. Oh, <laughs> you know what that God. means. <laughs> of course, it must be time for sex education, if you can call it that. Add a red-faced adult trying to justify the rhythm method and a leaflet about sexually transmitted diseases, and you've got what's offered in UK schools. Well, this week, more than 30,000 <laughs> people have signed yet another petition calling for the government to do the logical thing and make sex education compulsory. Right now, it's only mandatory in secondary schools, not academies. But parents reserve the right to remove their children from these lessons, which is a scenario often played out in faith schools. Mm. No one wants to talk to children about sexting or revenge porn, but some of our children are exposed to these things every day. Of course, parents play a huge role, but our teachers also need to help look after our young in an increasingly sexualised digital world. The concept of consent has never been more important to explain to children alongside how to do long division. Well, I thought my first instinct on this was because I was educated mainly in the private system, although boarding schools and some state schools were. I don't remember having a single minute of sex education or SRE, sex and relationships education. Mm. In fact, I don't know many British men who actually dare use the word relationship when mm. it comes to their relationships mm. with women. Um, <laughs> but then I thought, actually, can we leave it to parents to do this? However, shonky, sex education is in schools. Because I was trying to remember who told me about the birds and the bees. And I seem to remember when I was about 10, going, being driven back to boarding school by my father with Boris sitting in the front seat and I was sitting in the back and he went, <clears throat> and the windscreen wiper was doing this. It was raining <laughs> Sunday evening and he said, uh, your mother has asked me to talk to you about, and we went, stop! Like this. And he thought we went, stop the car. We wouldn't let him go on. It was just too embarrassing. <laughs> okay, we didn't want to hear it, so we just didn't want to hear it from Even our dad. more dangerous if Boris so had given you lessons, I'm sort of... <laughs> <laughs> He was 11. <laughs> he was 11. Calm yourself. It's interesting yourself. that you remember the rhythm of the windscreen. Oh, I remember. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. horrifying. Isn't it? So maybe it's better for teachers to do it. Maybe it should be... Uh, mandatory, but mm. my my slight hesitation is: you see your chemistry teacher or your love, you're the lo oh. your ing lovely English teacher, and then you have to have a conversation about about the rhythm method or can something. I, can I just or bring up some? Isn't other that a bit complicated? Some, yes, and so teachers need real support. Yeah. But let me ask you: when you have do, teachers what, specifically for this, when you? do you think the guidance? So mm. bearing in mind, it's not compulsory sex education, but the guidance given to teachers to do a very difficult lesson. When do you think it was last updated? I don't know. 17. 1869. <laughs> <laughs> Not far off. It was 2000. It predates pre Facebook. Internet and, yeah. It predates okay. the internet as point. social media. Okay. And just wait. Okay. Just wait. Another thing to put into your mind. 28% of 11 to 18-year-olds say that porn dictates mm. their view of sex yeah. and relationships. Yeah. A large proportion of girls specifically think they have to behave like porn stars, porn that they've seen online that they wouldn't have been able to see easily before 2000. Yeah, yeah. There is a huge yeah. 
shift problem. change yeah. Yeah. in the way because people, people, have, yeah. people have, have much more access to explicit porn as yeah. well. It's yes. not thumbing through a, no, a 1970s yeah. magazine. Yeah. Yeah. It is explicit and I it, have can be, it, it can be... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I have an observation and, and a question. The observation is... Define child. At mm. what age are you saying? And the I'm question saying is, can I have that I banana think when you finish? <laughs> right, well, I this, don't need the other. This belongs I, to someone on the team, <laughs> so let's just leave that for them later. And yes, you can have but, my banana. But, but, I mean, but what's a child? Define a child. 11. What age? 11. Yeah, I would so, say 11's 11 far too old. Far too old. 11. I think. I, I so think they're you can looking go, at they're looking at porn so, at seven sorry, or we're something. Sorry, possibly. No, no, but we're no, talking in about your world, We're talking about know. compulsory. No, but, yeah. So you're calling for a massive over uh, review. Talk, so yes. what age would you start to drip in some form of sexual... Definitely younger. I would say probably sort of seven or eight. Okay, thank but you. But I would say, yeah. m so I would say yeah. compulsory sex education to a level which I'm right. really talking what, one about. One hour a week? What are we can, talking? Well, Who's well, paying? That's in the details, isn't it? Can I just say... Yes, you've had a say. Right. Can I just say that there are... Your point, you make absolutely valid points. It's got to be updated. It has to be mandatory. It's not for parents to... to it is to, mandatory now. It has to be compulsory. Uh, compulsory, parents sorry. Parents have to be on board and reinforce it. Listen, of course, it. parents. Yeah. I'm going through this at the moment with my yeah. children. So what you know, do you One's 13 think? and one's 17. Well, you're just they have sex had, education. They've had, fan yeah, they've had fantastic <laughs> sort of exposure to sex education through their school. Mm. Um, and <laughs> in, in terms of the conversations and... Is it a and state school? We can no, it's private a private school, school but, but they... They uh, are very relaxed about talking about it, but they've still got that bit of With you. parental, yeah. like, not quite sure. But yeah, cool. I want to show you this, because we need to revolutionise the way we deliver sex education, because it, be, it should be fun, it should be light, it should mm. be something that you can talk about. And there's a brilliant video that my children show me where it replaces sex with having a cup of tea and compares it, oh, yeah, and there's yeah. this pe stick yeah. pencil man animation that I just want to show you this oh, yeah. right, okay. about okay. consent. Yeah, this is good. If they're unconscious... Don't make them tea. Unconscious people don't want tea, and they can't answer the question, do you want tea, because they're unconscious. OK, maybe they were conscious when you asked them if they wanted tea, and they said yes, but in the time it took you to boil the kettle or brew the tea and add the milk, they are now unconscious. You should just put the tea down, make sure the unconscious person is safe, and this is the important part again, don't make them drink the tea. <laughs> so good. And, you know, and that's TV a big yeah. That's yeah. a small yeah. clip. Yeah. 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 Well, now I'm usually bringing you tea. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a cigarette. Yeah. I've, 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 I've learned in two days not to ask my wife out loud in front of the kids for a cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the point is with that is that it's it's a you know two and a half three minute um, video video mm. and it basically the the issue of consent which is massive obviously, at the moment. Particularly because about. of all this porn. And, and, and it, it, what it does is it, it just tones it down, it makes it a bit more enjoyable, but the message sticks. And, and my yeah. kids, they actually... When I said we were doing this subject, they brought it up. I didn't bring that up. They okay. went, look at this video, it's really good fun, and we get it. Emma, can I ask you one question? I'm an Orthodox Jew, or I'm a really, really devout yeah, Muslim. Yeah, what's your what, what, view on you're faith? You're going to force my child against all my religious beliefs. I think it's a faith schools, you said. I, th I think... Yeah. No, but I think faith schools should be forced... To have but sex education. This is like education. the burkini, oh, then, isn't it? I completely disagree with this that. This is the burkini, isn't yeah. it? Why this should is, people? We know better than you yeah. do. This is really. You I, want the state. I think faith. Children in faith schools. I went. I actually went to a faith school till I was seven years old. Okay. And but, I have got... but you didn't go to an Orthodox faith school, though, well, did that, you? I, no, so it, was, it, was a, it was a Jewish school. I went to a but, Jewish school till I was seven years old, and I'm going to say to you... But there are different then, types and different levels of faith but let me, school. Let me finish the point. Mm. I have to tell you... That first of all, having been to one, I'm very, very conflicted about how I feel about them generally. Mm -hmm. But what I would also say is, I think that in that respect, there is a duty of teachers and the state to fill in the gaps that so, parents won't do. So you won't know better do. than parents. I do. On, I do think we do on this. The oh, state knows yeah. better than the parents. Yes, yeah, on this. I do. And I think, I think one there is... third of students have Real reported being that. sexually harassed at university. We're about to hit freshers week sexually harassed on an evening out. Right. People do not understand consent in this country. Yeah. People do not understand got... how you things are working. Porn yeah. is the... Sorry, sorry, so just let me say one point. Porn is the sex education of the 21st century. And whether you're a Jew, a Christian or a Muslim or nothing, you deserve the right as a child to be fully equipped with the information. And if your child, child is being abused the right to to home, mm. if a child is being sexually abused in his own home or her own home, and there's nothing at school that tells him this is wrong, who will tell him? What's his reference you know, who point? Will... Thank you. Exactly. But the thing is, Nick, I mean, I, I think that's a very simplistic argument it to is. say that the it's state... 
knows better than the parent. Well, the state in lots of areas needs to no, support... No, she's saying the state knows better than the parent. Didn't but, say but, it like but, that. Sort the, of. But what the, else? The, the conflict there, I believe, is that in lots of areas, the state needs to support parents, and particularly around sex, I think it's a taboo subject still. Mm. It's, it's something that parents and children don't like to talk about and share with each other. So you do need an external provider yeah. for yeah. that. Yeah. And, and actually, I do yeah. think if it's done in the right way, if it's not done in a way that, that, that sort of shows... But human sexual organs, but you can, you can, deliver, you can deliver sex education without it, yeah. I think, offending yeah. people. Yeah. I really do. I At a certain well, age, age right. is important and the content's important. I d I, can I say, I, I didn't get a sort of proper sex education until I was about 30, um, when I dated an Indian tantric master. And then... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll then, tell you what, darling, that's... Have we, have we just talked about that? You've got the banana. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever won this debate got that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and in his culture, which is actually quite interesting, um, um, basically what happens is at 11, um, the mother teaches the son. It only happens women, mothers to sons, um, but teaches the son the sort of, you know, the ins and outs of lovemaking by the, the Kama Sutra. She also doesn't, obviously... Doesn't but do not it. everyone's got a mother who's going to teach them the Kama no, Sutra. No, but my point is, I think culturally we need to be much more open with this stuff. But when it comes to sort of faith schools, you've lost me on that one. I knew was I would. It? Yeah. I predicted that. Yeah. Was it Sting? <laughs> What do you mean, was it, Sting? Was it sting? <laughs> Sorry. No, no, it wasn't Sting. <laughs> have you got his number? Yeah, I'll you give you his number tantric? after. Yeah. What I like is whenever I bring these subjects up, I can all trust you to take them very seriously, <laughs> which is important. And Nick, I'll... No, I don't need okay, that. OK, anyway, I am next, and my next subject for sure is definitely not a laughing matter. Oh. I'll begin with a few admissions about who I am. Yes, I was a board member of the official Remain campaign. And yes, we lost. And now the vote to leave is being explained as the revolt of the working class people, supposedly vulnerable to what the UN has called divisive, anti-emigrant, xenophobic rhetoric. Well, I grew up in a working class community, just in case I haven't said that a few times, <laughs> on a council estate in Walthamstow, in case you didn't know that too. <laughs> and I am the child of Ghanaian immigrants. Oh, yeah, you've heard that a few times as well. <laughs> and I know that since the Second World War, Britain's working-class communities have done more than any other group to integrate newcomers into this country, more certainly than the more affluent sections of society. The people who make up Britain's working class are not racist. Their vote wasn't a rejection of people from other countries. It was a rejection of an unfair economic system. A system that hasn't helped those whose jobs have been taken away by technology, not foreigners. And I believe Britain's working class people, the people that I grew up amongst, know the difference. I think, it's, obviously, it's very complex, the reasons why people voted to remain or, mm. or to leave. It's very personal to people. Mm. But the perception that I had, and, and that might be partly because of the way the Leave campaign set themselves up, mm. um, was about immigration. Mm -hmm. It was about immigration, it was about restoring £350 million to the NHS every week. Um, and, and some of the posters that we know very well about, um, some of the attitudes, a lot of the vox pops about people afterwards that, that were speaking about why they chose to leave, did revolve around the subject of immigration and having people in their neighbourhoods that they felt that if they weren't there, they would have a better life, they'd have more opportunity. So I think whether it's factually correct, the perception mm. that, that um, people that voted to leave did have some issues about race and immigration, I think are, are, are absolutely uh, correct and, and, to, and there's a lot of evidence that will support that. I think we kind of almost need to put Brexit to one side. What I'm talking about is obviously since Brexit there has been the rise in reported hate crimes and, and a lot of people are forgetting. So what I suppose the point I'm trying to make is people are forgetting that actually we need to celebrate the working classes because the stuff that we are so proud of in terms of being a multicultural and, and tolerant country and probably one of the best examples of multiculturalism in the world it's those people who've lived it. 
So the politicians may have been the architects of this, but it was the real working class people that were the builders. And all of a sudden, we are forgetting that without them, we would not have this tolerant society that we're all so proud of. That's Forgive what I'm me. saying. D let me just, I, I don't know if I, <laughs> I'd love to find the clip, but I swear I sat in this position and you mm -hmm. there in the run up to the referendum, mm -hmm. where you said to me, as a black woman, mm -hmm. I am very scared of Brexit. Did you or did you not say that? No, 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 that, that's not exactly what I said. OK, but to paraphrase. What I, what I said was, because of the rhetoric that the vote leave side were throwing so around... So the official vote The leave. official, exactly. And what I'm talking about here is, all of a sudden... But you effectively called that side racist. They were, but that's the campaign. Oh, I'm not... Boris Johnson, Boris Johnson I'm, uh, and Michael That's the campaign. I'm not talking racist. about real people. Well, Nigel Farage's team? I don't know. I, I don't think Nigel Farage's I'm talking Farage about real yeah, people. I'm talking use. about real people. I'm talking about working class, everyday people who are now all being tarnished and called racist in By this whom? country. By the press. When you read the media, that's what you're seeing all the when time. When did you last read? I, have you read those headlines, Emma? I, I have. Seen... Well, well, if we look at I some was... of the... Well, we can't talk about what happened a couple of days no, no. ago. June, the thing that confuses me about what you say mm. is that in the Leave campaign, the, the Leavers were asked to vote for a control of immigration mm -hmm. and more money for the NHS. At no point in my recollection was the white working class or the working classes told that if they voted for Brexit, they would get their industries back, they would get their steelworks back, they would get their coal mines back. I, all the jobs that the white work, the working class think have been made obsolescence by, you say, technology, which is what yeah. they, why they no yeah. longer have votes and why they voted for Brexit. They don't have so, jobs, you mean. so if it was technology, mm -hmm. why weren't they told if, if well, you vote for Brexit, that, you'll get... <laughs> if it wasn't, people... There Coming a... in and doing jobs that they could do, why then yeah. did they, yeah. what did they think they were getting? Well, I think in terms of vote leave, there was a lot that was promised that clearly is not going to happen. We know that. But what I'm trying to explain here is... Post no, you said Brexit. They, they voted Brexit because of the economy, not because of any other issue. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is that they, it was made to seem as if everything was anti-immigration and that this group is, as all of a sudden, has become the racist sector of society. How can you say they're not racist? Because I grew up in No, 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 because and you I can't, know they're not. your entire argument is, und, is, is completely undone. Let me say why. Tell me. Because you can't group people together like that. Just like we can't no, say be, they're racist, no, you can't say no, 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 they're 100% no, no, no. not racist. No, no. Just like women you don't all feel the same. You're racist, you're working class. No, 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 we don't need to be politically true. correct about No, we're, we're not being politically correct. But what I'm saying is if we are looking at immigration, and that's what we're looking at, this is the group that is most affected by immigration, and this is the group who, for the past 50, 60 years, have it. welcomed and embraced it. This is, this is the group that intermarries that. more no. than any other sector of society. You, yes, you can, because that's fact. You no, can't say all of them. I'm not saying every well, single. That's what I'm, just saying, that, I'm not saying every single, June. but I'm saying that actually if we that's look at the people who have to live it, they are the group that live it. But you only have to look at the rise of UKIP in the areas that they're they've been successful in to see that there is less tolerance in certain areas just like there is but, amongst rich people yeah, of, of, of immigration and and the leave campaign used that absolutely they exploited to, to, that. to their yeah. to their benefit but shame on the remain campaign for not admitting that there was a massive problem P with that the system of immigration. That I no buy. one owned up to the fact that yeah. more than 50% of that. people that yeah. come into this country yeah. are from non EU countries. Yeah, I buy and that. no one was yeah. brave enough to stand yeah. and say, do you know what? Yeah. We, our policy's wrong yeah. and we need to, we need to get hold of the policy. That. If they'd done that, they that. might have actually swung that. the vote the other way. But I'll irrespective that. of that, Jeez. I still but think But I'm saying let's celebrate. Let's celebrate the people who have been the builders of the society that we are all so proud of. June, what interests me is. What's your answer to the fact that areas that got the most money from Europe, the most, as it were, economic oh, no. support, yeah. Awful. voted Out. to leave? Yeah. So if you're, if you're making this sort of economic stroke technical but I, but argument, I think, it no, just doesn't... No, but I think but the that, facts I think on the that, ground don't but bear I think, it out. No, but I think, Rachel, a lot of those areas didn't even realise... But are you saying they're stupid? Hang on a minute. Are you saying the state knows best? Are you saying the state knows best? Juna, you say You know what? I've had enough of you lot this week. I've hardly spoken. I like you today. This lot, you can go on. Let me ask you a question. Yes. I think you grew up in a working class area. Yes. Well, I think it was Wolfenstone. Do you think if you were... 
her a, whatever that lovely picture of you, a 9, 10, 11 year old mm. uh, black girl living in Walthamstow. Do you think your life's easier than it was when you were there? How would a life for a 10, 11 year old girl in Walthamstow, black girl, be now as it was compared for you those years ago? I think it's probably quite similar, actually. Yeah. I, but life for an 11 year old um, black girl from my mother's generation was completely different. And that's what I'm saying in one generation. Because the headline worried so me. Much. The, the headline of your discussion was Britain isn't racist, right? That, that's. I don't think. Do you think. Do you think people think Britain is racist? Well, I, I think, I think I that actually a lot of the reporting that has happened since Brexit is, is beginning to, to tarnish and to group a certain sector of society as racist. Well, and also, so what I'm saying is that I grew up the, in this the thing society is, and logical, I don't think it is. It's I've logical that, that there's a con as a consequence of Brexit, there's a perception that we are racist because mm -hmm. it was all built, the Leave campaign yeah. was built on immigration. So therefore, you but become an apologist is, to people by saying, look, actually... But what I'm saying, but if there is a group that has called time because they have not benefited in globalisation the, the way the rest of us have, let's not forget that the things that we celebrate in this country, it was actually them, it was they, mm. they were the ones who did the heavy lifting. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, so what else has happened while we've been away? Britain won more medals than China. Yeah. Oh, we had two sunny days of weather, uh, or sunny weather days. Uh, and oh yes, Jeremy Corbyn couldn't find a seat. I am the passenger, not in first class. Can I say I much prefer him as a pop star than leader of the Labour <laughs> Party? I'd go see him. I'd go, I'd go, I wouldn't vote for him, but I'd see him. You can't get a seat. Yeah, there's no I seat. Thought, I thought they should only. have shown you him meeting you before he played Red, Red, red Wine. Red. <laughs> <laughs> that's next week, Rachel. Uh, well, that's it from us. Head to our Facebook page and send us a tweet. Say which one of us you think has been talking sense or <laughs> nonsense. Uh, and if you think there's a topic that we should be debating, more straight talking next week.